Well, I'm not quite sure to follow the choreography, but I'm, I'm just going to offer you one parting thought. Well, two, actually. One is, first, my deepest respect for what you do and for having found time to be here, because you could all be somewhere else tonight, um, as could all of you. But for what you're doing, you are the living example of what fascinates me about the digital futures of development. And I think the insights we got tonight are extraordinary, both by virtue of what they're doing, by what they're transforming, but I leave you with one thought that has emerged out of our work together in the high-level panel on, the digital, um, on digital finance and the SDGs, which is that, and it echoed throughout the, the, the stories that you told tonight. At the end of the day, the digital future of development cannot be simply the product of the next ingenious platform app you know, um, technology. It is actually something that we have to shape around the notion of a citizen. And this is what is emerging in our work. If we forget that it is people, the citizen, in, in, a, in a sense of, you know, a governed space, uh, one that enables, but that also sometimes regulates, that protects, and that does not pretend that simply because we can transfer money on a smartphone, everybody has money to transfer. Or because everybody could have a smartphone, we forget that there are countries where, out of tradition, out of culture, out of, you know, you can describe in many ways, Girls above the age of 10 are not allowed to have access to smartphones anymore. There's a wonderful American young lady who is campaigning on that, who I met last year at our Social Goods Summit, and it opened my eyes to the fact that, yes, there are literally societies, communities, where when you become essentially a 10, 11-year-old girl, your pathway is completely taken out of this digital universe. And so I think shaping these pathways that are going to happen, right? I think nobody should leave tonight here thinking that it's a matter of can we shut the door or not. That's not the discussion that we are having in the development arena. It's more about what is it that makes a society feel at ease with what is happening, that believes in what is happening. And I want to end by just quoting what I've done quite often in the last few weeks. The Secretary General had invited a panel on digital cooperation to look at this whole question and back to your point, Rob, also of how the world can work together and where, where does the UN fit into this? In its philosophy, in its mandate, perhaps in, uh, you know, in the minds of many to keep it out of this area because the last thing you want is the UN to meddle with things called digital. <laughs> but there was a fantastically simple reminder of you know, what it is to operate not in some imaginary vacuum and it was the simple statement in there that you know, we spent many years defending the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and, you know, believing that human rights are fundamental and belong to each one of us. And then something strange happened because the Internet arrived and somehow, you know, human rights that were absolutely valid in the analog world suddenly became questioned in the digital world. And things that people are allowed to do in the digital universe of broadband connectivity, hate speech, uh, discrimination, uh, child pornography, you know, human trafficking. Unbelievable. And yet we defend the right of people to do that from some strange notion that, you know, the internet shouldn't be constrained by government. And it's not the issue of government. Who is it who protects us from those who will abuse also that universe? And so, it's not just in a negative sense, who also empowers those who otherwise will never participate in this. And all of you spoke to that latter part of the agenda. To me, that's the future of the development pathway that we all have to figure out how we can walk it in terms of discovery, wonderful story from Bangladesh, how to protect what you spoke about, um, and above all, how to help the world learn from each other. And this is what UNDP does. We connect countries, people, ideas, A to I, uh, experiences all these areas in which people are creating every day in the most unlikely corners of the planet the future that we all can actually be part of. So in that spirit, thank you to a fantastic panel, Tolu. Thank you to you also. Thank you. And thank you all. Thank you. Thank I kind you. of feel like saying, somebody said to me a night or two nights ago, go and get a life. So uh, in that spirit, go and get a life. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Akim. Thank you so much to our panelists. We're so extremely grateful. Everyone wave your hands up in the air again. Amazing. Now that our night is over, I would love for you to please leave the bracelets either on your desk 
<laughs> you thought I was going to let you go out with them? <laughs> They're actually reusable, and uh, they do not work outside of here. We control them. If you try to leave with them, we will see you. So either leave them on your desk or give them to one of the volunteers at the door. You're not going anywhere with this, I promise. Thank you all so much, and have a wonderful evening.